Hi, welcome back. In the last video, we started by creating our project and we started creating our functions and we created these two functions, one for getting all screams and one for posting one scream. Um, so let's install now Express and make this code look much better than it does now. One thing I do apologize for is not making the code big enough. I uh, promise I won't do it again. <laughs> All right, so one problem with uh, having our function structured like this is that when we want to have two uh, endpoints of our API uh, point at the same uh, name of the endpoint but handle two different uh, uh, functionalities, we would have to put everything in one function and check the request method and respond um, accordingly, which doesn't look really good. So this is this is one of the things that Express is going to help us with. Okay, so let's install Express. Let's go to the console and uh, make sure that we are in the functions folder. So cd functions and run npm install dash dash save, oops, save Express. And once in it's installed, we can actually start bringing it in and yeah, it's installed. Let's do const um, yeah, express equals require express. Um, and when you have to initialize the app, let's do const app equals express and call it like a function because that's what it is. Uh, let's remove this comment and this hello world function. We don't need them anymore. And let's see how we can change this route. So instead of get screams, we can actually copy this code that's inside of the get screams route and get rid of this. And we can do app dot get and we do slash screams uh, because the first parameter of this function is the uh, name of the route and the second one is the handler, which takes a request and a response similar to what we did uh, like earlier. And here we're gonna paste back the code that we had and now this on its own will not do the trick we need to tell firebase that this app is the container for all our routes or actually the routes that are in the app so we can do exports and this is one of the things that um that express will let us do because what we want to have is one of the best practices for having an api is if we let's say have an endpoint HTTPS and let's say our base URL is called baseurl.com. We don't want something like this straight away slash screams because it's good practice to have slash API and slash something because on the actual base URL itself, you might have your website, but when you do slash API slash whatever, you can have your API there. In some cases, they do API.base URL, but uh, it's just different uh, conventions. So we want this prefix. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna do exports.api equals functions dot uh, HTTPS dot on request. And here, instead of uh, passing one route and one function, we just pass our app and this will automatically turn into multiple routes. And now if we save and if we deploy, so we run Firebase deploy, uh, it should prompt us a, it should ask us that whether we're sure we're gonna delete the uh, get screams function because we just deleted that code. Yes, it does. We will say yes, delete hello world and get screams because we don't need them anymore. Okay, now that it's deployed, we can actually go to our um, Firebase console, go to functions, make sure you're on that project. And there we go. We have this one function called API and we have create scream and the other ones that we created are gone. Okay, so let's actually test this. So we go to Postman and I believe, well, we will not go to localhost because we didn't do a serve. So let's actually copy this. Um, Oops, let's go to here and copy this endpoint, yep, from here. And go to Postman. And if we type this, we have to add our actual endpoint, which is screams, as we set it to be. And we, we send a get request. And we wait for it. And there we go, we get our screams. And now, 
if we send a post request, it should fail and it does fail. And it says that the route was not found, which is cool because uh, so now we don't have to do this thing where we do if request method equals post, don't send an error. The like express takes care of that. Okay, so let's change the create scream route as well. So what we're gonna do is actually just do delete this part. I'll just write app dot post, and the route would be slash scream, and this is the handler. And here, I think everything is fine. And we don't check if it's a post because this is automatically doing that. And let's leave everything as is for now. And actually, instead of deploying, let's just serve so that we can test it locally. We don't have to deploy. So we run Firebase serve. So now that it's served, then by the way, if you get a warning that your node uh, version is higher than the one that Google Cloud Functions support, don't worry about that. As long as you write your code that is um, compatible with Node 6 and you don't use any features that are not supported by Node 6, you should be fine. So let's copy this and let's go to Postman. Oops, not Chrome, Postman. Let's paste this here because now we're on a local host and if we leave this as a post request and we add scream without an S and we give it a request body and this request body will have a body, uh, new scream, I think three, we didn't submit three and the user handle and let's say Johnny. Uh, yeah, that's it. If we send, it should successfully create a scream. And yes, document something, something created successfully. And if we go to our database, just to make sure. And where is it? There it is. So Scream 3 by Johnny. Brilliant. Okay, so let's go here. Let's actually uh, fix up the Scream's route. What I want to do is that on e whenever we return a scream, I want to return its ID as well. And you'll see later why we actually need it. So here, instead of pushing all what's inside of that scream, let's push an object and this will have a scream ID. And we will take this from doc.id. It's a property that the doc document uh, reference uh, or snapshot rather has access to. Uh, let's get the body, which is doc. Uh, sadly, this is node six, so we cannot use the, like, maybe some of you are thinking, why don't we just do this, um, like uh, doc.data, which is called a spread operator and just spread all those properties. But because this is node six, this feature is not yet supported. So we have to do, um, we have to do them one by one. So body is doc.data.body and user handle is doc dot data dot oops dot user handle uh, what else do we have a created at is doc dot data dot created at um, I think this is it yeah this is it okay so if we save now when we get the screams I forgot to postman when we get the screams. So let's add an S here, make this a get request and remove the body. If we send this request, because we're still serving, it should update. And there we go, we get the scream ID um, as part of our scream. Cool. Uh, now let's change something because there's a problem here. We want to order our function, um, our screams and we want to get the latest one first. So let's actually order them by date. And we can do that by after collection screams, let's chain a method called order by, and let's pass the property of created at, make sure I don't misspell anything. And this by default takes a, an ascending order, but we want descending. We want the latest one to be uh, first. So let's hit control save and we go and we send this request and we should get uh, the latest screen first and we do the one we just submitted earlier. Brilliant. Now, one thing I want to change as well is that these created at, uh, I don't want to use the Firebase timestamp um, type 
uh, let's just use a normal uh, date string because that's recognized uh, in JavaScript and we can format it however we want. We want. So here, when we create the screen, I don't want to use the timestamp thing anymore. Thing anymore. Let's just use new date and let's just transform this into an ISO string. So dot de new date dot to ISO string and it's a function. So this will uh, make it into a string. And uh, let's let me actually do that. I'll do something. Well, let's create a file called DB schema. And this, by the way, has no implications whatsoever on our code. It's just something that I like to do. Let's do let db equal. Uh, here we're gonna write how our data is gonna look like, uh, just as a reference uh, thing. We're not gonna use this file in in anything. So I want each screen to have. Um, Actually, in the database, it's not going to have screen ID. We just return that from our code. It's going to have a user handle, though, which we will use to identify who is the owner of this screen. Let's make this an object like this, like this. OK, it's going to have a user handle. And let's give this a dummy uh, value of user. It's going to have a body. Give this a dummy value of um, this is the screen body. And it's going to have a created at, and this is an ISO string now. Let's actually quickly like generate one. So let's do new date uh, to ISO string, uh, not ISO and string, ISO string. Uh, let's copy this. I, I know you don't have to do this, but it, it just, I think it's, uh, it's good practice as a reference point. You don't have to open Firebase each time. Uh, one other property that we get, one, two other properties actually we're going to have. We're going to have like count, which is going to be a number, let's say five. And we're going to have comment count. Now, this is good practice because each time we get a screen, we don't want to as well check the comments that have the ID of the screen and count them and return that number because Firebase charges you on the amount of reads that you do. So you're trying to minimize the amount of reads that you execute each time a user sends a request. So if you store these here already, you will uh, avoid uh, too many reads on your database and be charged less. Okay, so let's, let's just leave this for now. So this is what our screams would look like. And uh, uh, yeah, okay, so this is, let's test this screen, this post screen. Let's make sure it's still working. So let's send a, let's, let's open up a new tab so we don't have to type the URL again. Okay, so post, I'm gonna have a body of type application JSON. And let's give this a body of new screen for, I don't know, I don't feel creative right now. <laughs> a user handle of Jane. And we send this request. Oops, not screams, scream. We send this post request. And there we go, we get a document, uh, something, something was created. Um, let's go to our database. And now we see the new one. And where is it? The new screen four. And now the creator that is a string instead of a timestamp. Cool. Okay, so I think this is it for this video. Uh, actually, one, one thing that I want to add, for those of you that are not uh, in America, and you're wondering why your functions are being deployed to, where is it, to US Central instead of uh, Europe, uh, by default, Firebase deploys to US zone US Central 1. Now, this is a, a bit of a problem because it's going to add like 300 to 400 milliseconds of latency on each request. It, maybe it's not a problem right now in testing, but later in production, this is going to slow down your application. So if you are like me in Europe and you want to change the deployment uh, region, you just chain after uh, functions here, you chain the method region and you specify the string, the name of the region. In my case, it's gonna be Europe-West-1. 
one. And by the way, you can go to Google Docs, Google Firebase documentations to find all the regions available. Uh, if you're in America, this doesn't apply to you. Just leave it as is. By changing this, next time we deploy, it's going to actually be deployed to uh, the uh, Zone Europe West 1. So this is it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start to impl um, implement authentication and register our users on our users collection. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.